Okay, we are starting this semester with our first demo on exercise number one. We're going to be jumbling up found line art images and looking at some of the different options for making clean line art that then we can composite. We're going to work in a, a slightly lower resolution than I have in, in past semesters because the intention for these will not be to print them, but to have them displayed digitally on screens at a good enough screen resolution. And that kind of opens up the source material we have as well. But we're going to start for the first time learning about resolution size, learning about background and foreground. The end product is going to look kind of like this, but more cleaned up. And even though we're going to be using Photo P for this, you could also use Photoshop for this. They're the same tools in the same places. Notice the little checker grid behind the images. What we're going to do is try to choose images that are just black line art on white backgrounds to layer up. And we're going to have a minimum of five different layers, five different images that we use. And then we're going to learn how to strip away the white background so it's all transparent and then replace it with a solid white background before we post it. So that in the end, it will be an image of just our line art on a white, solid white background. But we're going to be very careful to save it as a PSD so that we have a file that has all the separate layers. And then, though this meets the requirements of the project, I am also going to show you how you can finish it off by replacing that black line art with textures and colors that you might source from other places. And we can see past student examples in our class Imgur account. And you can see some of the banned book examples here. And then, you, of course, you can see my past instructor examples as well. So these are just introducing us to these skills. These exercises are worth two points. They're basically pass-fail. So if you attempt it, you'll get one point. If you attempt it and meet all the requirements, you'll get the full two points. And if you attempt it but don't quite get all the steps, get all the requirements, like you only have three images composited instead of five, you'll have a chance to repost to get the full points. And we'll be posting by following these instructions, just clicking on reply, putting your name there, and then posting your image. But I'm going to be walking you through these steps. And then we also have a step-by-step -step in the instructions that you can refer to. I only do that for the exercises, but it gets you used to it. So depending on how you can best kind of follow along. Okay, the first step is to pick your, your band book because we're basically creating an illustration of it, an image that's jumbled up from found line art that we think showcases that title, that band book. So for my example, I'm going to use the same one that I have demoed here. I'm going to use the book, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. And I researched it a little bit. Here's a banned book spotlight on The Hate You Give. I read it last year. I kind of remember what the big scenes are and characters and themes are of the book. And so by knowing that, I know that I'm looking for certain types of line art that I want to put together. So I want a raised clenched fist, which talks about kind of community activism and holding authorities accountable, a police baton to kind of show police violence, um, the fire to show riots and kind of violence on a public scale getting out of hand. Um, there are themes of, of blighted neighborhoods and kind of gangs in those neighborhoods that are victims of of drug addiction and of you know trying to find ways out of poverty 
through through the sale of of illegal substances so something that might symbolize that and then you have a bullhorn which i like as a symbol because it actually symbolizes not just the voice of the public being amplified like you'll see bullhorns used in in public protests but also used by the authorities to try to to quell public un unrest right so like a police bullhorn as well so these seem like potent images notice that they're all pretty clear icons that just kind of work on their own but these were all found using a program called AutoDraw. And unfortunately, AutoDraw is not working as it was designed right now. I checked it over the weekend. I'm not, I'm trying to research why it's not working the way it's supposed to, but maybe, maybe it will for you, but I want you to make aware of it, make you aware of it. So if you click on the AutoDraw or just search AutoDraw, it's a Google experiment. So Google does a lot of different test projects online with its infinite storage right and one of them was this auto draw project which which licensed art mostly from a design studio in new york called selman design but all of the artwork it's basically line-based clip art it's under a creative commons attribution license so we're going to be learning more about this. And a Creative Commons attribution license, attribution four, means that you are free to use it and share it and redistribute it and adapt it, remix it, transform it. That's what we're using, even commercially. So this says you actually can profit from these images. The only term to it, which makes it different than public domain, is that it asks you to give credit to where you source the images from, right? So you would just say that it's from the Google AutoDraw project, or at least was started that way, or that you made this using Google AutoDraw. Now, Selman is a design studio. It's one of those kind of businesses that with digital art skills you could work for or start your own. And of course, they can't make any money if everything they create is under Creative Commons, but they were paid by Google to, to create some images that Google paid for, paid them for, and then that Google puts, decides to make Creative Commons, because if they paid for it, then they own the license to it. So how this is supposed to work is it's an, an artificial intelligence thing where here are some of the, the designs that this studio created, right? And there are lots of them. But they don't show, there are hundreds and hundreds. So let's say I wanted to use a bicycle in my project. You know, this might be one of those designs that I could use under that Creative Commons. Now the way AutoDraw is supposed to work is that with this magic auto draw pencil so try it on your own computer if i draw something just click and drag you can see it's a nice clean line art it's then supposed to give me a bunch of suggestions of artists renditions of a star right of a cowboy hat of a raised fist and that's how I got these images. These were the ones that Google AutoDraw suggested. But since I've been trying it recently, it is not actually giving me any suggestions at the top. So maybe that will be differently different for you. But let's say that, but let's look at the advantages of Google AutoDraw even without that, that AI component. It's basically a very straightforward line art drawing program. So if you're not able to find line art imagery for your project, but you think you could draw it pretty well, you know, just click on the draw link here. You can choose a different thickness of line. 
and I'm going to ask you to choose black as your color. And then let's see, maybe a police hat, right? And I can try drawing it, just like you would in any raster drawing program. And if I make mistakes, I can click on the undo. And I can try it again. You can also do Command Z or Control Z on a PC. You could vary your line widths. So I am giving you an option to create your own line art, at least as part of your project, if you can't source it from other people's pixels. But it doesn't have that really clean, kind of polished look. but maybe you don't want that. Okay, so if you were to save something from Google AutoDraw, this is the easiest way to do it. You're simply going to take a screen grab of it because we're just working at screen resolution. So you make your image as large as possible on your computer. You know, you kind of zoom in on it Sorry, that happens with my trackpad sometimes. AutoDraw will also remember what you've been drawing, which is handy. So I make it pretty big on the screen. And then, as I show in the instructions, to make a screen grab, you have a few different options, right? I work on a, a Macintosh, and so I'm going to do a, what's called a targeted screen grab, which is Command, Shift, and 4 together in Windows. There's a print screen button that you can later crop in PhotoP. So I'm going to do the targeted screen grab, Command Shift 4. I'm going to drag a box around it, and it will take a picture of just that and save it to my desktop as a PNG that I can use. But it's not giving me any suggestions. Oh, so Heidi says in the chat that AutoDraw is working for her. So good. I'm glad. I'm glad it is. Maybe I just need to update my browsers or something. But if I drew something like this, it would show me suggestions for it. And you can scroll through the suggestions and it will replace it with that kind of clip art. So if it works for you and you can do a screen grab of it, fantastic. Okay, what I'm going to do is show you that auto draw is not the only thing you get to use to find line art or to create line art. I'm going to show you a site called Pixabay. But before I'm going to show you Pixabay, I'm going to show you why Pixabay. Because we could also use Google Image Search, right? And so you just go to Google and you click on Images. And then I could just type in Police Hat. The problem with using Google Image Search is this is every image online that has a tag for Police Hat. It's great for reference. So if you want to know like how to draw one, like I tried here from memory, right? But I would do a better drawing if I was looking at some reference. And I use Google Image all the time to find references. But the problem is most of these, the vast majority of these are copyrighted licensed images, right? That we don't want to just use as they are. And there are also a huge variety of different resolutions. So one thing we can do to help cut down on the millions of results is use these tools within the images. So we want to say we only want large images. So that's going to be a thousand pixels or bigger in one by width or height. And then we can actually go to usage rights and we can say um, Creative Commons licenses, which doesn't mean they're all the same, but it means at least these aren't 
standard commercial licenses. There are some 